first key influence is the model is really based on a broader notion of uh, diathesis stress hypothesis. Um, this is a well-recognized uh, theory or hypothesis in, in psychology and in psychopathology more generally. But it's this general idea that um, we all have, to a greater or lesser extent, um, vulnerabilities. Now, these vulnerabilities, or the diatheses, they can be biological vulnerabilities, they can be cognitive vulnerabilities, or they could be a personality type vulnerability. The whole idea about the diathesis stress hypothesis is the idea that uh, this vulnerability is not particularly problematic until you encounter stress. So we talk about it being activated by stress. So the IMV, the Integrated Motivational Volitional Model, is a diathesis stress model of suicidal behaviour. The second key influence on the model is uh, the theory of planned behaviour a widely used model in health psychology, which tries to conceptualize uh, all forms of health behavior in terms of the factors which are associated with the development of your intention to engage in the behavior and the factors associated with whether you actually engage in the behavior. Now, if you have a look at the model, the model is a, a tripartite model. So on the left-hand side of the model, we've got the biosocial context. In other words, the diathesis stress part of the model is outlined there. So that's on the very left hand side and it's described as the pre-motivational phase. So what it's trying to do is describe the circumstances in which suicidality often emerges. So as I, as I mentioned already, it has a diathesis component, but it also has the stressor component and it also has an environmental influence component. And this is because we know that suicide doesn't occur in a vacuum and we're well aware of the fact that uh, you're circumstances, your environmental influences are, are key risk factors for suicide. Now, albeit suicide can affect people of all backgrounds, we do know that people from uh, particularly deprived backgrounds are at increased risk of physical health problems, mental health problems, and suicide itself. So the left-hand side of the model just outlines the context in which suicidality often plays out. Now, the second bit of the model, which is the middle portion of the, of the model, is what we describe as the motivational phase. And that draws directly from this idea of uh, the theory of planned behavior. And it really describes the factors that we think are associated with the development of your intention to engage in suicidal behavior. So it's looking at what are the factors which make somebody suicidal? What are the factors which lead to suicidality in some people and not in others? And then the third bit of the model is the volitional phase model. And again, that draws directly, this overarching framework draws directly from the theory of planned behavior because it argues that there are the factors which determine whether you'll act on your thoughts, the volitional factors, are different from the factors which determine whether you'll have thoughts of suicide. So the key overarching framework for the model is driven by the theory of planned behavior, this overarching idea that there are factors which are associated with the development of your suicidal thinking the motivational phase, and there are factors which will determine whether those thoughts, those ideations, uh, are translated into actual behaviour. The final influence in the model that I'll describe today is the work of Professor Mark Williams. Uh, Mark has been working in the area of suicide research for many, many years. And what I've drawn from his work um, for the purposes of the model it's his idea of the cry of pain. And Mark talks about uh, the, the unbearable psychological pain, which obviously is associated with suicidal behavior, as emerging out of feelings of defeat and feelings of entrapment. So in other words, suicidality is the only option an individual has. So if you look at the model, I've incorporated that directly into the central portion of the model, uh, the motivational phase. Is the motivational phase is describing the development of suicidal thinking. So what I've tried to do though is extend the work that Mark has conducted into trying to understand how it is you move from feeling defeated to feeling entrapped and how you move from feeling trapped to developing suicidal ideation or suicidal intent. And the rest of the central core of the model is uh, dedicated to understanding this process better. 
And I describe this in terms of motivational moderators and threat to self moderators. So threat to self moderators really are any factor which increase or decreases the likelihood that you move from feeling defeated to feeling trapped. And then the motivational moderators describes any factor, any moderator, which increases or decreases the likelihood that suicidal thinking emerges out of feelings of entrapment. And then the bottom portion of, that, of the central plank of the model looks at the core psychological processes which may be involved in the movement or the transition between these different stages.